seemed like it was a bit of a you know rough day for the offense. Just kind of uh, how do you learn and just continue to get better from a day like that? Yeah, it was fr- it was a little frustrating today. I mean, I don't. I mean, as an offense, especially after having some really good days together, um, excited to put the pads on. Like, you don't want to go out there and, um, you know, have a bad day like that, I guess you could say. But in days like that, I feel like you learn a lot about yourself. Um, you know, and obviously there's a lot of camp and a lot of practices to, to figure stuff out. So, um, you know, it's just part of the part of the process. Parents seem pretty upset at times on various things happening in practice. Is that, uh, how would you describe his temperament today? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the beauty of playing with, you know, a great like that, right? Like you have someone that's going to at all times hold everybody accountable, no matter who you are, what happens. Uh, and I think that's kind of been something that's, you know, not every team has that, not everybody. Uh, um, so, I mean, I think that's really a blessing at the end of the day to be able to have someone that cares that much and, uh, you know, has a standard like that, that's going to, you know, that becomes our standard as a team. But to have a Hall of Famer that's won a Super Bowl, been there, done that, uh, you know, I think that really is, uh, I mean, it's necessary. You seen him that hot before? Um, I don't know. I kind of just I don't really pay that much attention to it, right? I kind of unless I'm the one getting yelled at, which I try to, <laughs> which I try to avoid being in that situation as much as possible. Um, you know, I I don't know if I have or not, but you know, it was all for a good reason, I guess. When you guys go full pass, I know you take care of teammates. How far can you go as a blocker? Or- well, you still have to pull up a little bit because it's a teammate. What's the mindset on it? Yeah, I think it's just I think it's just being smart about it, right? Like you're not gonna go out there and chip somebody when they're not looking and try to knock them on the ground. Um, you know, if you have like some of like the motions or kind of sifts back across the line of scrimmage, where it's like you and a DN, like you're not gonna go out there and try to blow each other up and you know and kill each other. So. Uh, you know, I think it's just kind of using a little bit of common sense, right? Like, we all want to be healthy for the season. We all want each other to go out there and have a job and um, and whatnot. No one wants to see anybody go down. So I think it really comes down to, you know, caring about your teammate a little bit. But also, uh, on the other end of things, you know, you have to go win a job and you have to go out there and get better at what you do. And um, I think we have, a, you know, the way we practice and as a team, uh, we do that pretty well. We have a good balance. You say like uh, the tight end, tight ends with Aaron have had a lot of success throughout the years when he was in Green Bay. Just kind of does that excite you? And then have you um, looked at film from when he was with the Packers with other, other what tight ends have done with him? Yeah, that? yeah, it definitely excites me, right? Uh, I mean, I think you know one of the cool things is like you're never going to really be in a bad play, right? Like uh, the fact that he's always out there kind of playing against the the DC and. Um, I mean, there's a play today where like a stick nod and he, you know, he killed it. So the nod part was off and it was just a stick. And, uh, you know, we got to catch on that. Uh, and he just has such an unbelievable feel for the game. So um, let me answer your question. Like I went back and watched some of the, you know, Tanya when he had his 11 touchdowns, Jermichael Finley I watched, you know, um, Mercedes, all those guys, uh, Jared Cook. Uh, and it really just comes down to he has such an unbelievable feel for the game. Uh, you know, if you can try to see it his way and kind of feel it out and not just be a robot and do this and really have feel for it, I think that's really, you know, for any any position, wide receiver, tight end, running back, that's going to kind of give you more opportunities is just trying to, um, you know, be a smart football player. you see anything different from Lazard so far this year? I mean, last year he had his struggles and everything like that, but what have you seen so far this year? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, to start camp, he's come out strong, right? I think he's had three touchdowns out of four, you know, four days, five days now. Um, he's made some big plays in the past game. Uh, you know, obviously him and Aaron have a lot of chemistry, you know, from playing together for a while. And, uh, you know, I, I obviously, you know, he had his ups and downs last year. And I know just from talking to him that, you know, that not wasn't necessarily him and that he's excited to come out here and, you know, do what he needs to do. And I think it was 2020, Robert Tanyan had 11 touchdown catches from Aaron. I know you said you went back and watched some film. What was going on that year? What did you learn from that? And- how can you kind of channel that and, and have that kind of year too? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's kind of the feel thing and it's kind of hard to explain because so much of it is just trying to see the game through through Aaron's eyes, right? And that's kind of impossible because he's kind of like the Oppenheimer of football, right? Like, um, you know, just the way he sees the game and processes the game at the speed that he does it is impressive. Um, so it's kind of, you know, I don't know that, how to exactly answer that, but it's kind of just... You know, when you go back and watch the film and like you see maybe a play you you know could have did something different on or like he was looking at you at this point in the route and maybe you should have peaked or maybe you shouldn't have peaked because there was a blitz or something like that. Uh, you know, talking to him like, hey, like, should I have done this on this? Um, just trying to like really try to do your best to see it through his eyes. And I think if you can do that, then, 
you know, it's going to lead to a lot of success. Does that just come with just watching film with him and just, you know, getting notes and everything so he can try to see it as much as you can through his eyes? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of everything, right? Like, sometimes you're watching film on your own and you're just like, you know, like, okay, he was looking at me here, like, you know, should I have did this? Should I have not done this? Was he just looking me off since we know he loves throwing no looks? You know, half the time you think the ball is coming to you and it goes all the way across the field. Um, you know, some of it's like in meetings when he's just out, like, you know, he'll randomly ask certain questions and just, uh, you know, try to challenge you of like, uh, you know, why did I read this? How you, how should you run this? And that kind of gives you some insight into how he thinks about it. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, you know, trying to get in there with him and, uh, you know, talk to him about it and go through stuff. And um, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out as we prepare for games and stuff like that. What's it like seeing uh, Braylon Allen out there in the open field? Yeah, I mean, that was fun today, right? Um, we'll see how that... I mean, I think the cool part about it was I don't even think he really lowered his shoulder. He was just so big. He was just running a straight line. Uh, so that's kind of one of those iffy, you know, protect, protect the team moments right there. Um, but it's also first day of pads and, you know, everybody's excited. But, uh, yeah, since he's been here, I've been excited to, to watch him play. Uh, one of my old teammates in college, he was actually his running back coach at Wisconsin, Devin Spaulding. And uh, he had nothing but great things to say about him. So I was excited to see him out here and, you know, obviously to see him in pads. Um, I was excited about it. I think he did a hell of a job. I mean, other than Pilates, I mean, well, Pilates, I've been doing that for like three years now. Uh, but just the way I've been lifting and working out and conditioning, I mean, my goal was to put on like 35 pounds of lean muscle mass, and I did. And um, it's been paying off pretty well so far. So, so how can that uh, added add muscle help you throughout the course of the season? Um, just sustain on them double teams. You know, I felt like last year um, I was getting moved a little bit, probably just because I just didn't have enough muscle, you know. but. When I take on these blocks out here, you know, I just feel way more sturdy, you know what I mean? So. 35 pounds since when the end of last season? Uh, since probably like five, four months ago. Yeah. What, what did you play out last year? Like 305. I'm like 330 right now. So, so what does your diet consist of in order to get to that, that, that 30, <laughs> um, 35 pounds? Well, my girl, she would make me like nine chicken eggs in the morning, a whole avocado, a handful of spinach. Lunch time, I'd eat like six chicken breasts. Um, yeah, a little salad on the side. Then lunch, I'd probably eat like a little pasta, like a, like a pound of ground beef, but then like a few noodles mixed in. That's I did it every day, you know, and it, it paid off. I'm still eating that same way right now, but a little less though. You know, I don't want to be like too bulky, you know. So. so was that prior to free agency? Just change your diet? Just. I just wanted, well, just as soon as the season was over, I knew I wanted to change some things up. So, yes, sir. Just how your thoughts about how you fit in with this defense and then just playing with a guy like Quentin Williams beside you? Um, I just loved everybody, man. I love everybody, man. I love the guys. It's a great team, great overall atmosphere. And uh, playing next to Quentin, it's going to be amazing, you know, because I've been a big fan of his since I was in college. Um, just a big, big fan. Um, I love the way he power rushes his two to ones, his counters. It's amazing. Um, just the way he plays the run is also amazing as well. You know, his feet is always hot in the run game. You know, and I, I like to try to look at his game as much as I can to try to uh, blend it into mine. And um, I think I fit in very well. Um, just another power guy. Um, I think I'm very explosive as well, just as as much as uh, everybody else that's on the D-line, you know. And um, I just can't wait to get to battle with these guys. I don't know if you heard what I asked Coach Sala, but a lot of D tackles have come here and really Turned their career into an upward trajectory like Sheldon Rankins and John Franklin Myers, Quentin Jefferson. I'm wondering if that's one of the reasons. You, I know you have a relationship with Salah, yes, but that one of the reasons you came here is because it seems like guys come here and get better. Uh, they they just you know said I had an opportunity you know, and I'm all about opportunity you know. I I work very hard even though I've been through a lot. I've always worked super hard you know, and the chips they they fell where they may you know, but I never gave up on myself. And um, I've had a relationship with Salah, of course, White Cotton as well. He was the uh, assistant D-line coach when I was a rookie. So that played a part in it as well, you know. And I'm just looking to maximize, you know, every opportunity I get this year. You talked about this, some things just not going probably the way that you planned. Just how do you keep that positive attitude when things like that happen? I mean, well, I'm very religious, you know. Uh, just talked to my mom a lot, and she, she really was – well, my mom and my family, they really was the reason, you know, I, I had a lot of dark days and, you know, just to be able to touch that grass is, is a big blessing, man, you know, and I, I've been through a lot, bro, like, like, for real, like.
my fault. I've been through a lot, bro. So, Yeah, I've been through a lot, bro. That's all I can really say, but I never gave up, you know? A lot of people would have gave up, but I never gave up. Is there anything else? You, uh, when you and Quinnen were in the SEC, you were two of the best defensive tackles. Did you guys kind of have a rivalry, you know, just trying to be that best guy in the SEC? Uh, you know, Quinn came out before I did, so, but still, you know, I, I always looked at, like, a lot of the best guys, and I wanted to, I always, like, dreamed of being a, a top guy, you know? I still do every day. I'm super hungry for it, man. I'm super hungry for it. You guys around here came up throughout the word Super Bowl quite a bit. You've been to the Super Bowl. You were just in the Super Bowl. Sir? What, uh, what does it take to get there, and do you see the early returns that this team has some of those kind of makings? Um, it's hard, bro. It's it, it's hard, bro. It's, it, it's hard work, man. It's hard work every day, day in, day out. And it's like you get to the playoffs and you play against teams and you could just kind of feel them wanting to get out of there, you know? But that's when you step on the gas even more, you know? And um, I'm just glad that I can bring that, you know, to this team to let guys know, like, that's when you really put your foot on their neck, you know? You could hit a guy and you could feel it. Like, just the energy is not there, you know? And uh, for sure, man. Just yeah, it was it was a great run, you know. But this team is this team is special, man. Niners was what the Niners was, but this team is very special, you know. And I'm just glad to be here. I'm blessed to be here. What is it gonna take to get you know to that level uh, with the 49ers and potentially contend for a championship? Hard work, you know. They, these guys they work their tail off, you know. I just I, and I love it, you know what I mean. I love it. I love it. I love when people just work hard and just go at it, drop your head down and just get to work and. Um, that's it. That's the only thing it's going to take. Hard work, consistency, and discipline, you know, um, at all phases, mind, body, and spirit, you know. What do you think that week one game is going to be like? I mean, there? for me, it's going to be like any other game, honestly. Um, I'm I'm not even really looking at it like that for me, you know. Another, another opponent, you know what I mean? Week one to week 32, you know what I mean? Like, it's all the same. But it's going to be awesome, you know what I mean? Can't wait. How good did it feel today just getting the pads back on after a long offseason of OTAs and the first four days of practice? Oh, yeah, it was awesome, man. I know there was a lot of emotions out there. Everybody had a lot of stuff to get off their chest, you know? So, and I was one of them. <laughs> so, nah, it was cool. It was cool, man. You know, a lot of banging, you know what I mean? Probably some people on the ground, you know? Everybody, you know, it's intense, but shit, that's what you want to see, so. I know you maybe don't go one-on-one -on -one with him or match up with him a lot, but what's it like seeing Tyron Smith on the other side? Oh, you know, that's the OG, man. You know, I, I can remember, I told him, I was like, bro, I remember, like, I was a kid. Like, I was a kid and I used to watch, like, you was on top 100. Like, I remember people saying you sleep a lot, like, all type of crazy stuff. Like, but it's awesome, man. Just seeing the great out there, like a, a Hall of Famer, you know what I mean? And that makes you want to get better. Just me being inside right there, seeing him out there, it's like, okay, like, yeah, I got to get on my my language, you know, for sure.